Here's one of my favorite and easiest strategies to trade the NASDAQ. Now, the first thing when I say easiest, it is a pretty simple strategy to follow, but it does require that you follow a specific set of steps. Now, when I say steps, um, I want to see a few things happen in order. And because of that, it forces that I remain disciplined and it forces me that I remain patient. All right, so this is a real great strategy. There are a few steps or components, like I mentioned, involved in it. But like as you will see right now, it's not that difficult at all. Right, again, very powerful strategy. And another thing I like is that it sets up during a very specific time window between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, again, on the NASDAQ. All right, so during that time window, I want to see a very specific setup, again, following a few steps, a few things that have to happen in order before I would take a trade. It's got a really high winning probability, but I have to mention that if one of those steps fail to appear, then I just wouldn't trade it at all. So it forces discipline, like I mentioned, uh, it allows you to stay focused during a two hour time period, and it also, again, uh, forces you to remain very patient, which are very cool attributes to have or necessary attributes to have for anyone trying to trade the market. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go to, let's say, yesterday's price action. And I like to open my computer screen to trade this strategy on the NASDAQ uh, or open my trading platform, sorry, should I say, before the 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Market. All right, or time step. And what I like to do is use my vertical tool and go drop two lines at the 9 a.m. and the 11 a.m. time steps. All right. So it is during this time period over here that I'll be interested in taking a trade. All right. Again, following a very few specific steps that I need to see. All right, so that is actually the first step. Go and mark out those two time stamps, the 9 a.m. and the 11 a.m. mark. The second thing you want to do is you want to wait until price enters into that 9 a.m. Um, time stamp, and you want to see price take out a previous structure low or high. Now, generally, this could be a structure low or high that formed during the Globex session, so when most of the people in the U.S. were asleep, or the overnight session, as they call it, and you can clearly see that the low for that day, this was actually yesterday, was around about there. And the high leading into the 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. window was around about there. All right, so that's the second step. And mark those highs and lows. If you're dealing with very strong trends, you might not get reversals like this. But in this specific um, um, strategy, I want to see a price take out a higher low of an overnight session, higher low or global session, some might call it, and then immediately see a reversal. Again, this all is done on a five minute time frame. All right. Um, there is also a different way that we can actually do trend continuation trades, but that's also a different video for a different day. Right, first step, mark off the time window, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Second step, quick recap, mark off the low and the high of the overnight session, and then see what happens as price enters that time window. Here we can clearly see as price basically into the time window it took out this previous structure low that was set during the globex session and we had a reversal to the upside again obviously this is done in hindsight there's a few more things that we're going to look at as to how to actually into this we've also seen actually what we call a sweep above the overnight session i also followed by reversal right so there's actually two entry opportunities or two trading opportunities are set up on this particular day now once price takes out one of your highs or lows, depending what direction price is moving into that time zone, you want to immediately see a reversal. Right, so we've got a first step time zone, second step highs and lows, take out and want to see a reversal. The next thing you do, and this is the third step, is you go to a one minute time frame. All right, and we're going to be using the one minute time frame as our actual entry time frame. And there's a few things we want to see here as well. So, after step one 
and two has been completed. Step three, I want to see a break of price structure. What do I mean by price structure? In this case, price was making lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high. Again, it broke it over here already in within that time zone that we want to trade in. Um, sorry, the previous low, and then made another low, but then at some stage start making high, 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 low, and then broke the previous structure high there, which was a lower high. All right. Again, another potential just from a price um, action perspective, an indication that we might get a trend reversal. All right. So shift in price structure. Right, that's the third step. Shift in price structure. Now, fourth step. As soon as you see a shift in price structure, again, this on a one minute time frame and all of the other steps have already occurred, you want to see what is called a fair value gap. Now, fair value gaps basically occur when you, and it's a three candlestick formation. Let's say, for example, in a bearish move, you see a candle moving lower. You have another candle moving lower and then you have a third candle moving lower then between your first and your third candle you have a candlestick that creates a gap between the low of the first candlestick and the high of the third candlestick so basically creating a gap what it's called a fair value gap now price would generally reverse back not always into a fair value gap and find in this case and you're in a bearish scenario find resistance then get rejected back to the downside all right, we get obviously bullish fair value gaps. There's some of them all over the place here. For example, let's say this candlestick moving higher here. There's a big long bodied one over here and then another one to the upside over here, creating a gap between high of the first candlestick and the low of the third candlestick. Again, a three candlestick formation formed by those three candles over there. Okay. So that's what a fair value gap is. Price often returns back to them and finds support and resistance. But not always, obviously. This is why I want to be using fair value gap as a trade entry location, but only after my first three steps have taken place. All right, so again, just quick recap. Mark off the 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. mark. Number two, mark your highs and lows during Globex session. Number three, you want to see a break of that and a shift of price structure. Once that occurs, do we have a fair value gap that occurred right prior to price taking out that price structure? Okay. And you can see here that the only one that has occurred, or actually there was two after each other. There was a one little one over here, which created the gap between this candle, this candle, and this candle. And then we also had another one between this candle, this candle, and this candle right over there. And what we've seen here is although the price did not get into the lower one, it did reverse, retested this fair value gap. Actually on two occasions, one over there and one over there, got rejected and price shot back to the upside. Now that would have been an entry to take. Now there are two ways that you can enter this. You can either have a buy limit order as price created this fair value gap at the close of the third candle have a limit order waiting as price retest it and you get triggered into it i like to what i like to do is actually wait for an initial confirmation like a reversal candlestick pattern or a candle that moves into that area then creates a candle that fails to make a new low so rather than putting a buy limit order at this candle the next candle fails to make a new low so i would have placed a buy order a tick above there and in this case, the next candle would not have filled that order. We had another move back in, a second test of the fair value gap. And on the third no, candle, sorry, again, right after that, fell to make a new low. So that for me would have been an entry with a buy stop order, a tick or so above the high of that candle that fell to make a new low. And in this case, you can position your stop either at the most recent swing low or at the first candle that formed part of the fair value gap formation and if i had to do that you can see price never tested it was only 58 tick stop loss plus or minus and i like trading with two contracts i like taking one off at one to one and then aggressively start trading my stop to the upside but the minimum i want to see 
price actually move back and go and retest the overnight session high. So what that allows you to do is actually aim for really large targets. But it depends. Sometimes you have quite large candlestick formations down here. Creating fair value gaps is very large. So with the NASDAQ, obviously, you've got to be careful if you're dealing with very long ranging candlesticks or let's say have a very large fair value gap and you go and place your stop loss at an area below a recent swing low, in this case for a bullish setup or at the low of the first candle that created the fair value gap or that forms part of the fair value gap, there might be too much risk involved. So always got to, you know, consider what your risk would be. In this case, the risk for me personally would have been pretty small. So that would be in a setup that I would be interested in taking. And then targeting after I take my first uh, uh, stop loss off the overnight session high. In this case, it actually ran over a 1 to 3 ratio. I know traders that just put a definite get out of the market at a 1 to 2 ratio. But in any case, what I'll also like to see is at least a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio towards that overnight session high. In this case, it was actually over 1.2 one to three sorry and uh, that's also additional qualification that i want to see for um me to in order to take the trade right so risk is very 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 important so those are the steps yeah there are a few working cogs in the strategy but uh, if you do follow them uh, go and review this video go to your previous day's charts on the nasdaq mark off the 9 a.m to 11 a.m mark see if you can see these reversal candlestick patterns or not reversal candlestick patterns here reversals occur after price breaks the previous um, or the, the overnight session high or low and then look for those fair value gaps switch to one minute time frame wait for price structure to break look for a fair value gap and see if price retests it and if you get a reaction from there that could potentially be your entry all right so that's the strategy i've uh, been going on for about 12 minutes now but I do teach this strategy in a live trading and training environment as well. So if you want to find out more, there's also additional indicators that can be used that actually makes the strategy even better. Filters out the good setups from the bad ones that actually raises our success rate with this particular strategy. And you can find out all more about this by potentially joining our uh, Ninja Cater's Fast Track program by clicking the link below in this description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.